Oh, hi. Well, welcome to the pottery room. Just finishing up this beautiful vase. And this is going to be the first episode in a two episode series on kind of an introduction to the pottery wheel. We're going to talk really simply about centering our clay, what that looks like, and we're going to talk about opening it and then raking it and preparing to get ready to throw. So, come on in. Let's start throwing. Now that I have my bat on, my tools out in front, I have my one pound of clay, I want to get started. The first thing I want to do though is I want to shape this clay. I want this clay to be shaped kind of like an egg. So that I have a point on one end, and the other end is nice and round, and there's really no visual cracks or crevices. It looks like a nice smooth piece of clay. This point is going to be directed right at this machining mark right in the center of the wheel so that I know exactly where it goes. Before I actually attach my piece of clay, I'm just going to wet my bat down with my sponge. Making it slightly tacky is going to make sure this piece of clay sticks to the bat. So when I push it on, I'm simply going to take this point, push it right on the bat, and wobble it back and forth. And if I've done my job, when I lift up my clay, I pull the bat right off with it. So we're going to talk about arm position now. I want to make sure my arms aren't uh, floating in the air that they're firmly planted on my legs. So that when I'm centering, and I'm going to do it from a right-handed point of view. If I was doing this from a left-handed point of view, everything would just be flip-flopped. So my left hand is going to be firmly placed um, so that when I apply pressure, this pressure is going to be from the side. So that as I push, I'm going to direct pressure from my elbow, through my forearm, through my wrist, and straight through the center of the clay. This way I'm not putting too much stress on my wrist like this, and I'm not putting so much pressure that I'm trying to pull the clay. I want to push through the clay like this. So just imagine you're shaking someone's hand, my wrist is bent just a little bit, and my thumb will go straight through the center of the clay. Now with my right hand, I'm going to grab that thumb just like this. So that this right hand will put pressure down and create the curve on the side. Together, these two hands will create the shape of my centered clay. Let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a liberal amount of water. I'm going to go ahead and just completely soak that piece of clay and my hands and I'm going to apply pressure. Now the pressure part, I'm going to make sure that I apply gentle pressure on my clay when I start and increase my pressure as I go until my clay is centered. The illustration here will show you kind of a bell curve of pressure. For our one pound of clay, our end goal is to complete this process of centering in under 60 seconds. So this is a quick guide taking you through the steps, one through seven, of how to really apply that pressure and really make it count once you're there. Take a few moments, look over these steps, pause the video, record these things, whatever helps you to commit this to memory. The first thing that I really need to be aware of is making sure that this clay is centered. So when I look at it from above, it should look like this. Like it's not moving at all. The number one problem that I see a lot of beginners have is that it's wobbling at first. And they're so excited to move on that they skip that step. And this is what's going to happen. As I work my way through and I open this, now what I'm left with is I have a thicker side and a thinner side. It's not going to show a lot of difference right now, but as I start pulling, one side's going to be taller than the other. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about is speed. Now, hopefully you've been playing around with your wheel and you can kind of get a gauge of how fast your wheel can go and how slow you can really operate the pedal. For centering, I want something around 80% of my full wheel speed to maybe 100%. So when this is going full speed, can I comfortably center this clay or do I need to back it off a little bit? I usually work at a little bit slower, around 80%. But it's going to work a lot better at a faster speed than it does at a slower speed. So when it's centered, 
faster speed, I pull my hands gently off and it's centered. If I'm not sure, the easiest way to do this is simply put your hands around your clay and cover your eyes and you can feel it. One other thing I should mention too is that as I was centering, I only covered up half the clay. This way I can also work with my sight and my sense of touch. So, that pretty much takes care of centering. We're going to go ahead and move on into opening. The next part is the opening. And this is the area where I'm kind of working at a speed of about 75 to 60% of my full wheel speed. And what the goal is here is to make a small indention into the clay. And I do this a couple of different ways. I always let my left and my right hands rest on the wheel and I take my thumbs and just gently push them down making a small little pool. As you can see I'm not going very fast I'm trying to keep my arms braced and my elbows on my legs. I'm using the side of my thumb to push down create a little pool that I can drop some water in for the next steps. Now as I put pressure down I'm making sure that my hands aren't wobbling. If my hands are wobbling, that translates into my clay wobbling. So as I push down, my thumbs can only get so far. So this is where I switch. And I'm going to take my two fingers on my right hand, brace it with two fingers from my left hand, and I'm going to push down with the pad of my finger. So I'm pushing down until I feel like I'm pretty close to the bottom and then I'm going to stop my wheel. At this stage I want to talk about my needle tool and the important role that it plays. I'm going to use my needle tool to check the thickness of my piece of clay at this point. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my needle tool, I'm going to poke it down through the bottom of the clay and I'm going to run my finger across or against the needle until it comes in contact with the clay and when I pull it out I should have kind of a, a quick measurement. I'm looking for about a quarter of an inch, about the thickness of a pencil, this thickness right here. I happen to be a little bit thin. There's really no way to add more clay back, so I just need to keep checking on this each and every time that I throw. As you get better at this, you won't really need to use your needle tool as much right now, but I want to prevent it from being very thin and trying to throw a beautiful pot and then trying to cut this off at the end and having little to nothing left in the bottom. Now that I know how thick it is at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and rake this piece of clay. And that's going to be the final step that I'm going to talk about in this episode. Before we begin talking about raking, I want to show you an easy way to cut your clay in half and see it in a profile view. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my wire tool, I'm going to wrap it around my fingers, just like I'm flossing, and hold it out in front, drag underneath, and I'm going to come up right through the middle. And I'm going to take that extra piece away so that now you can see what this looks like in a profile. So I cut this in half and this is what I want to see. I found my depth right here is about a quarter of an inch. And all this clay right here on the side, this is going to be all my potential for when I start pulling this up into my wall. So I'm going to put a little bit of water back and now I'm going to use my my fingers on my right hand to slowly just drag the clay back. Pivoting at my fingers and my knuckles and I'm going to drag this clay at a wheel speed of about 65 to 50 percent. So what I'm worried about right now is making sure that my fingers, I'm not using the tips of my fingers but the pads. So I'm pushing down and dragging this out. And when I get to the edge I want to hold it, let it make a couple full revolutions and then relax the pressure. What I'm looking for inside is pretty close to a 90 degree angle. I want this wide enough for my hand so that I can actually get inside and start pulling. I'm going to rake this up just a little bit more. So I'm putting pressure down and what I'm also doing is compressing the clay. Clay is made up of these tiny little platelets that slide back and forth and right now I'm pushing them back together. I've been stretching it, now I want to push them back together. So I, every motion that I make from the inside out I always make one from the outside going back in. So now that I've finished raking, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half again and show you what it looks like. So again, 
taking the wire, wrapping it around your fingers, pushing underneath, and dragging it underneath until I'm about halfway through. And then I'm going to pull up right in the center. I'm going to remove half of this, and as you can see, I've raked this bottom out flat. I don't have quite that 90 degree angle that I was hoping for, but something pretty close. So to kind of wrap everything up, I really want you to think about four big things. The first one is really to make sure that your posture is good. You're sitting up close, your back is not hunched over, and that when you're looking you can look straight down into your clay. The second thing is to make sure that your arms aren't floating, and when you're moving, if, the, if your arms are wobbling, your clay is definitely going to wobble. So keep those elbows firmly planted. If you need to, bring them close inside to your body. Lock that elbow right down in here as you're pushing against and as you're pushing down. Make sure you're well locked in there. The third thing is really think about as you're balanced. So as I'm working, if I quick pull and then a quick release, the clay is going to respond to that. So I want to have nice steady hands. As I'm pulling out, I hold it there. If I'm um, centering, I'm centering and then slowly relaxing my hands. I want to be steady and balanced. Any unbalance will translate into wobbly clay and just a big mess in the end. And the fourth and final thing is really be aware of your wheel speed. If you're trying to center really, really slow, it's going to take you much longer. If you're opening really, really fast, you may be overshooting that and going too fast and stretching or tearing your clay and not really giving it a chance to um, finish correctly. So that's kind of it for our centering and opening. In the next episode, we're going to talk about how to take what we've learned now and translate that into a finished four to six inch cylinder with one pound of clay. Happy throwing!